Hello. Um, first poem I'm going to read out is called Diverted. Stack the things you believe belong to us. Careful, precarious columns. List the things we've lost since leaving. Study the wall where photographs might hang. Remember the coffee table full of photographs back home, man's iconostasis. Children, grandchildren. The one I see most clearly though is a black and white print of Kara of Kazakhstan. Pedigree Afghans stretched aristocratically on a sheepskin rug. The three bar fire and a dab of silver paint diverted from the tail fin of a plastic bomber out of a kit. Mam kept the pedigree in a box with deeds, wills, school reports, a cache of handmade birthday cards. Dreaming my sister with me once, both of us left by the side of the road, somewhere, alone. I said, having dreamt a dream before, it's okay, we can wake ourselves up. <clears throat> the next four, we're doing it wrong. <laughs> a bit closer. Okay. The next four poems are from um, a sequence of ten um, out of the pamphlet that are collectively called Horse Oracles. And part of the idea for Horse Oracles came from a reference in, <coughs> that I came across by Tacitus, the Roman historian, who just talked about a German tribe who used horses as oracles when they were under threat <coughs> to decide whether or not they should fight or flee or surrender. And the first one's called From Tacitus. Always white, unforced, waited upon like deities themselves, never breaking sweat, never struck, never laboring at all except the king comes, reverent, seeking counsel, yokes a pair pristine to his chariot. His priest is waiting at a distance, unrehearsed, unbiased, observes anyway, perhaps reciting hermeneutic keys or praying or just too scared to think. Will this year's crop be wasted? Will houses burn and people flee? Will bodies go unburied, barely mourned? Will he dare influence events? Or does the king, despite himself, address them, encourage, threaten, cajole before he takes the reins? Dumb animals. And the next one's called Jerusalem. Marzipan and metrosexuals, spitfires, saxifrage and pitbulls, hostas and honeysuckle, brew and glue. Oh, Jerusalem, it's not that I despise, and why should I despair? Kids chase down roe deer in the streets of Glasgow with air rifles and crossbows, stringing them up, minus the sellable meat, on the nearest washing line. These blocks, these tenements, these traps, this is ours. Track marks crossing unfenced parks and gardens. Lifeblood, minus its oracles. Vital signs of something pushing back. And then <coughs> it's a poem called The Burning Gats. The Burning Gats are it's a place on the banks of the Ganges where they burn dead bodies. The men tending the turgid fires of the Gats on the Ganges told me the sternums of adult males burn brightest, but often the women's hips yield last, resisting almost forever. The birthing bones are dense, compressed. The wheel turns again, the impetus sprawls and spews and dissipates. So many cycles. Survival seems imperative until... Still, there is so much time for repetition, so much time for colourless cells to multiply, gestate, and make another elephant-headed god who's fond of sweets, another beloved Ganesh. How many cow dung goddesses are there left to be born? How many Randy Krishnas? Plenty, plenty, plenty. And uh, this is the <coughs> last of the horse oracles. It's called Teeth. 
A universe lost its teeth, its folklore, its garrisons. Finally, even the water began to hesitate. Chemical bonds kept glancing over their shoulders, gathered in shivering, paranoid groups, and waited. A culture heroes called for, a ruthless giver of names, of ranks and titles, dispositions, hierarchies and grades, a bricoleur, an arch inventor, a megalomaniac. And I'm your man, cries Daggerty, flat on his back in the gutter. Mind you, he says, I'm better at children's games, a charlatan, a trickster, a liquor of cake bowls. And yet, why not? A new progenitor stands astride the cosmos, and humans a tribe again, ranting, scoffing, delirious. And this is a poem called Skate, um, which is, I wrote it after I'd been sent to the hospital by my dentist because he found a lump in my mouth. Um, so I briefly thought I might have mouth cancer. And for some reason, <coughs> while I was there, I remembered my mother giving me skate, which is a fish. I don't even know if, how many people eat it these days because I haven't ate it since I was a child. But <coughs> she would serve it to me. She'd scrape off the meat and serve it with butter. So it'd just be this beautiful kind of rich mash at first, but, um, so that's, so this poem's called Skate. Buttery pulp, I liked it, remembered it as I was walking away from macular facial, waiting for the big hospital lift, plates of it, steaming. Until my mum decided not to do that, leaving me to it to scrape it off myself. The wing is cartilaginous, ancient. A boy was preening himself, and the bus paused, I thought, to let us watch him, wet, untried, unlike Odysseus. I liked him too, the way he'd wake up, dazed and caked in salt and wondering, what was he doing here? What would he do next? And the last poem I read out is called Sweet Talk, <coughs> um, which I dedicated to Michael Longley's two images in the first stanza that are taken from two of his poems. Wry surgical hymns, comparing birds' feet lifted in flight to raw, tucked testicles, using a mustard tin to prop a gaping jaw. Let me have a go, cack-handed, diffident, green, but cousin to you by a quilt of bogs, by a cinder pitch, a ginnel, a hospital ward, by a single bonny tibia tugged from the pyre, Patroclus perhaps, my journeyman piece, a tourniquet from Fuse Wire.